Axle 4, shiny new, very, very bright white skeleton sat there. Um, so I found a probably not very quiet corner, but this is why I'm sat in a corner because the labs are very, very busy. Um, and I thought we could use this skeleton's cranium and some cling film and coloured paper to talk about the SCALP scalp. The scalp has five layers. It's, 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 it's fairly interesting in terms of what happens when you have a blow to the head or you, you cut the head and you get lots of bleeding and that sort of thing. So what we'll do is we'll start from the bone, build the layers up to the skin, talk about the five layers, um, and then probably go back down again and talk about what happens when you get a blow to the head and why you see those things. Gosh, this is an ugly corner, but there you go. It's either this or nothing. All right, cling film first. The bones, the bone of the skull cap, the bone of the calvarium, the bone over here is covered with periosteum, um, like um, other bones of the body. It's this periosteum, periosteum around the bone. This periosteal covering is like the periosteal covering of other bones. Up here it gets called the, the pericranium. This is really bad cling film. This isn't going to stick, is it? We're going to have to give you a bit of, uh, bit of sellotape, I think. This is a plastic skeleton. I would never do this to real bones. Um, just this plastic model. Okay, so the, the pericranium, um, P, scalp, P. That's the first layer and it's tightly adherent to the skull um, and it's even more tightly adherent to the fibrous joints here, the sutures. It, it, you know, so you, you could, if you've got a bit, you could peel it away from the bone, but when you get to the sutures, you're gonna really struggle to get it, to pull it away from the bone. It's gonna be really, really tight there. But periosteum or pericranium is the first layer. Okay. Next is a layer of, of loose areola tissue or a, a loose connective tissue. So if, the periosteum is this dense connective tissue. This is kind of a thinner layer of connective tissue. Um, and in this layer, this is where we'll find lots of blood vessels. This is a very deep layer. And those blood vessels will actually um, link through the bones of the skull to the dural venous sinuses on the other side. So if, if a wound penetrates this deeply, and if you get infection in this layer, there is a risk of that infection passing intracranially through these emissary veins that pop through little tiny holes in the in the bones of the skull and the cranium that we can sometimes see. One of the other things that this extra layer does here, the loose connected tissue or loose areola tissue, is allow our scalp to move somewhat freely over the underlying layers. And then the layer over the top of that, this is the most interesting layers, this is the aponeurosis. So ALP, aponeurosis, loose connected tissue, periosteum. And the aponeurosis, do you remember what aponeurosis is? It's where muscles form a tendon or a tendinous-like structure, but instead of being a rope-like tendon, which we're most use, used to, it's a, it's a flat tendinous sheet. So over here, we have this flat tendinous sheet, and then we have occipito frontalis, right? So this muscle that helps you look surprised. Um, this is the frontal bone, this is the occipital bone. So the occipitofrontalis muscle has muscle bellies anteriorly and posteriorly, and those muscle bellies are linked by this aponeurosis. You also have the temporoparietalis muscle laterally and the superior auricular muscles. These are useful muscles if you're able to waggle your ears. You can, I can't do that. Um, so this aponeurosis then, this tough, tendinous muscular sheet covers the scalp, covered in this layer here, in the middle layer really, and all of these muscles attach to it. And that's an important idea. So aponeurosis. These muscles then are muscles of facial expression. So they're innervated by the facial nerve, cranial nerve seven, okay? Um, then the next layer over the top of that aponeurosis then is um, a fairly standard, another layer of connective tissue. And it's the sort of connective tissue you often find deep to the skin. It's got a really good blood supply. We've got lots of arteries passing up to the top of the head through different routes. And those arteries are all gonna kind of run deep to the skin. So this is a great area for losing heat from the top of your head. But those arteries are all gonna link up and anastomose. So there are gonna be lots of links 
um, to the other blood vessels here. So there's a really good arterial blood supply in this layer. Over the top of this layer, and this is the fifth and final layer, this is the skin. So S, skin. So the skin then, well you probably know about the skin, it's quite hairy skin, all right? Um, you've got lots of sebaceous glands in there, lots of sweat glands, usually lots of hair follicles. I'm not doing too badly for a man of my age, am I? Um, uh, and the skin here is well innervated by the sensory nerve of the face, which is cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve. So we've got those two cranial nerves involved in the scalp there. Um, it's, it's a pretty active layer. And those are the five layers of the scalp, S-C-A-L-P. So skin, connective tissue, aponeurosis, that muscular layer, loose connective tissue or loose areolar tissue, and the periosteum or pericranium. Those are the, the S-C-A-L-P layers. So what does this anatomy help us with? Well, um, you may well have had or seen um, the skin being cut up here in, in the scalp, either from a blow or from a, you know, something sharp striking the skin there. And one of the notable features about cutting the scalp is that it bleeds very, very well. If it's a superficial cut, because of that rich blood supply, it bleeds really well. You see lots of blood. The injury looks way worse than it usually is because of all of those arteries, because of all those anastomoses. But what doesn't happen is the wound doesn't gape. It doesn't get pulled apart because of this aponeurosis layer deep to it holding everything together. Do you know what I mean? If you haven't cut through the aponeurosis, then the wound doesn't get pulled apart. Whereas in the face, because you don't have those layers of fascia deep to the skin, a wound to the skin in the face does tend to get pulled apart. However, if you cut um, more deeply and you get down, you cut through the aponeurosis, then because you've got the occipital muscle and the frontal muscle, you've got the occipital frontalis muscle putting on the aponeurosis, that wound does get pulled open because the muscles, they have tone. They're, they're, they're pulling on the aponeurosis. So a deeper wound will gape and will bleed even worse. Um, the good thing is, and this gets used surgically, if you need to remove a flap so that you can get maybe through the bone to the brain, so if you remove a flap of scalp, when you put it back, it's actually very good at, at healing. It doesn't lose its blood supply very easily because of all those arteries, because of all those anastomoses. Do you see what I mean? So on the one side, scalp wounds bleed a great deal, but on the other hand, if you need the scalp to heal, it tends to heal very well because of that um, rich blood supply. Um, the other thing that happens then, and this is actually why I've put all these layers here, can you see how all these layers are running down to the brow of the eye here? Now if somebody gets a blow to the head up here and it causes some bleeding within these layers deep to the skin, then that blood can track within the layers and descend down towards the eyes. But that means that a blow to the head up here can cause the development of two great big black eyes and bleeding around this area because the blood descends down between the layers that we've talked about and then starts to collect around the, uh, the, around the eyes. So a blow up here can lead to two black eyes. The eyes may not have been damaged, the injury's up here, all right? So, um, a little bit of interesting anatomy. Okay, next time, see ya, bye-bye.